Hello and hey howdy. Man, today we've got some technical stuff, but it's going to be good. Don't zone out. I see you already nodding. Here, here's what some of you do, young electricians. Hey, we'll talk about the code. NEC, code, code requirements. It's like shooting you with a trank dart. All of a sudden you're, you're out. Well, don't do that. So today we're going to have a brief discussion, and you guys and homeowners too, man, this is all the time. Can we run Romex inside of Conduit? And man, I've seen this and it comes up on inspections, but look, you homeowners especially, you love to put Romex inside of Conduit. Can you do that legally? Some of you old guys will say, no, you can never put Romex in Conduit. So here we go. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Go to the book, okay? Go to the book, hang on, grab your code book, and here we go. So Romex, Article 334 says, hey, this is where you can and can't use this stuff. So one of the places that pertains to this in Article 334 is you can't use this outdoors or in damp or wet locations. Romex isn't made for outside. So that's all it says. So it doesn't say we can't use it inside of conduit. So if we're in a garage like here running surface mount, let's say EMT, we could run Romex inside of that. No issues, okay? Now. Here's the two things, and it's just two. Don't zone out. I touched the code book. Some of you already just fell off. You probably did yourself a harm. Two things. Um, Article 334, again, talks about not using it in damp or wet locations. So not outside. Here's the other place. You're doing a kitchen remodel. You're pulling power underground to a kitchen island. When you pull wire through that pipe, it should either be THHN or THW, individual wires, or UF cable, not Romex. Here's why. Article 300.5b says, basically, code is fairly recently, that any underground conduit is considered a wet or a damp location. So as soon as we pull that 12.2 or 12.3 underground to that island, even though it's inside the kitchen, inside the house, once it's underground, it's a wet location, red tag. Can't do it, okay? So no, no wet, damp locations. The second thing is we have to talk about conduit fill, and we ignore this all the time. Here's what that means. If you go to uh, chapter nine, which is tables at the end of your code book, it'll talk about the percentage of fill. In other words, what percentage of a pipe, this cross section right here, what percentage of this is that wire allowed to fill up by code? If we're gonna do it, you know, let's at least know what we're doing. We used to always do it. Basically, if it fits, it goes. Old guys will remember this, if it fits, it ships. Um, not really code compliant, it does work. So in uh, chapter nine, table one, it says for a single conductor, it's not supposed to fill up more than 53% of this. And I won't go into the math, I'll put myself to sleep. But here's the thing, a multi-cable conductor like Romex is considered, because it's sheathed, it's not individual, it has to be considered one conductor. So whatever this cross section is in this whole cable, is how the code wants you to approach that. So last I did the math, if I have a 12.2, which this isn't, you see the red, it's a 12.3. 12.2, I have to put that in a three quarter inch conduit. Okay, now beyond that, there's other issues. If you have multiple Romexes over 24 inches of conduit, you have to derate it, that's a different problem. So here's the thing, you can run a single Romex through conduit, different kinds of conduit, as long as it's not in a damp or wet location, and as long as you don't exceed the fill, you don't overfill that conduit, the conduit's large enough. Otherwise, it can go, okay? Now, I've seen lots of comments on other threads and places I've gone, it's like, no, oh, you have to use wire individual conductors, and to be honest, my opinion, I think you should. It's easier to pull, you can pull stuff through it in the future, but a lot of times, if you're transitioning from flush, hidden work, like through the attic, and you're coming out into the surface pipe, it's easier just to transition and go through the pipe versus doing a J-box and pulling individual wires and having another splice. So the point is, by code, you can. You just got to meet those two criteria for what we're describing. So let me know in the comments when you guys see this. You old guys, I'd love to argue with you. Um, our primary code sections are, of course, Article 334 for Romex. Um, Article 300.5 as far as underground or their, their location for wiring methods for what's damp and wet locate locations. And then and in chapter nine, you guys can go to the book. Here we go, see if you're awake enough. Look at that, ah, you're still awake. 
chapter 9, notes number 5 and 9, talk about how we apply the fill to a, a multi-conductor cable. So anyways, homeowners, do it right. If you're going to do this and save yourself a bunch of money and not call an electrician, do it right. Electricians, newbies, go to the book. Everybody respects your opinions and your gray hair. Not really. Go to the book, start the book, go from there. Y'all click subscribe. I want to see you guys. I want to see that. Click like. And I, man, I am so looking forward to your questions because there's going to be some questions. Take care.